This is Terrence Orange Banks with Information Age Financial Solutions. Coming to you, talking to you about the stock market and with the stock market reaching all new highs, even though we're bouncing back and forth in there. Uh, it's just, I thought this video would be pointed because I came across this article, actually listening to a podcast from Peak Prosperity by Tan Lu, why many of today's most owned stocks are Ponzi schemes. The podcast was very telling, very informative. He's actually wrote a book that I'm going to put a link to um, uh, after, after listening to the podcast. It was just such a phenomenal talk. And with everything, you know, if you've listened to any feed that you're going on, if you listen to YouTube videos, there's so many individuals talking about how to be rich in terms of um, stocks and options. I just thought this this video that I'm doing here and this this podcast I listened to was extremely important because of that. So I'm not, let me dive right into the article. Uh, kind of gives you an excerpt. I'm, and I'm give you the link so you can listen to the podcast for yourself. Uh, as always, I put always the links inside the description. Stocks provide a return to today's investors via two mechanisms, dividends and capital gains. Dividends provide an income stream which can be quantitatively valued. Capital gains result from speculation and expectation that future dividends will be higher than the market currently expects. But what's the value of a company that continues, continuously pays no dividends and does not appear as if ever will in the foreseeable future? Former financial advisor and current statistician Tan Lu authored the recent book, The Ponzi Factor, The Simple Truth About Investment Profits, explains how many of today's perpetually dividend-less companies trade in the public market are operating as Ponzi schemes by definition. As a result, a substantial amount of the market capitalization of our stock market is actually phantom wealth that doesn't truly exist. I'll repeat that again. As a result, a substantial amount of the market capitalization of our stock market is actually phantom wealth that tr doesn't truly exist. It will vaporize during the next financial crisis as investors prioritize cash flows in hand over the promises of starry-eyed CEOs. And this goes against everything we've been taught about investing for the long term in the stock market because it's always going to provide you a future gain. Uh, I know it sounds provocative here, but let me continue on in the article and I encourage you to leave the links again to listen to the podcast and, and maybe even take a look at his book. When it comes to stocks, there are two ways of making money. There are capital gains and there are dividends. In case of dividends, there's nothing wrong with those because they come from the profits of the underlying company itself. But the issues with capital gains is that they come from other investors. When one investor buys a stock for $100 and then sells it for $110, the extra $10 or actually the full $110 they're getting is not coming from the company. It comes from another investor who will then need to sell it to you, yet another investor. So when one person buys low and sells high, another is also buying high and needs to sell for even higher. And the system where current investors' profits are dependent on cash from new investors buy is by definition how a Ponzi scheme works. I'll repeat that again. I kind of said it quickly. So one, when one person buys low and sells high, another is also buying high and needs to sell for even higher. And the system where current investors' profits are dependent on cash from new investors is by definition how a Ponzi scheme works. No doubt. And I never really thought about it that way. You know, I participate in the stock market. And if you participate in anything with 401ks, you never really thought about it. You think it's really coming from the underlying company, but it's really not. What's wrong with that is a lot of stocks don't pay dividends. And while you're an owner of a company, the company never pays the so-called owners. That's exactly how it works, because when a stock doesn't pay dividends, there is no monetary connection between the revenues and profits of the company and the actual shares. And the only thing that's really increasing is just the Ponzi process of one investor trading money with another investor. And it's fundamentally different from the money itself that investors ultimately want. No one actually wants to buy stocks and say, hey, I don't ever want my money back. I just want stocks and I want to watch that value grow and I never want my money back. Wrong. Everyone wants their money back because a stock is essentially completely worthless and you can get, unless you can get your money back. And every investor that buys stocks wants more money than they contribute. But, investors are the, but if, if investors are the only ones contributing money into the system, how on earth can they make all the money from it? That's really the bottom line. A stock without dividends is really just a Ponzi asset, and there's no monetary connection to the company. <laughs> wow. That just changes everything. Again, you know, I'm here to just bring information 
especially because we have to think about things differently, especially in the information age. And this is just kind of breaking all the sacred cows that you've been taught and even for me to even believe. So therefore, it's not really equity instrument at all. Furthermore, we can see this because some people say, oh, well, stocks are real property. How can it be real property if, if literally companies can print this stuff like toilet paper at any time they want? Real property takes time to replicate. People forget that the reason why stocks were equity instruments to begin with is that they all paid dividends, according to history. Before the 1900s, all stocks paid dividends, and there was a monetary connection between the shareholders and the companies that they owned. That's how stocks were supposed to work. It was supposed to be that simple. You buy a piece of a company, it makes money, you make money. But that's not how stocks work now. This idea that stocks can literally have no dividends and these can, companies can make billions and never pay dividends indefinitely, or that these companies continue losing money and keep printing stocks, in the case of Tesla and many others, this is a new concept that came over the past hundred years or so. So the way the stocks work now is fundamentally different from how they actually were designed to work and they, how they worked before the 1900s. And a stock without dividends, where there's no monetary connection to that company, should never be seen as an equity ownership instrument. Click the button below to listen to Chris' interview with Tan Lu. Man, that right there is just worth your time to take a look at this. Listen to this podcast. Take a look at Pete Prosperity's site. And actually take a look at his book for guest Tan Lu. This video has been any value to you. Please leave some comments and subscribe. Until my next video, I'm out.